Well, today we're out here in the garage with uh, CSX number 42, and it's time to finally quit messing around and get a proper tilt column in this thing. I have a very hard time driving, uh, really, uh, just about any car, honestly, uh, in a comfortable manner. But with these uh, Peabody's here, it's almost an impossibility without a tilt column. So we're going to go ahead and look at removing uh, the column and also installing some crews at the same time. We're going to look at some of the differences in the columns. These are Saginaw columns, so you'll recognize this from like GMF bodies and all sorts of stuff like that. The individual mounting brackets and things like that are going to vary from style to style of car, but at the same time, it's going to work out as far as the actual in, inside components of the column. So if you've got a column and you're looking to add uh, some crews to it, or you're thinking about just, uh, well, maybe your uh, tilt column's loose and you need to tighten it up, we'll try and look at all those things today as we go ahead and uh, remove the column for this and install the new one. All right, first and foremost, the thing I like to do with these when I start, especially with this particular car, is just go ahead and pull off the steering wheel and then also pull off, uh, in this case, the uh, steering wheel adapter uh, first. I find that to be the easiest way to go. It gives me a little bit more room when I'm trying to remove the trim under the column, and that's kind of nice. So we'll go ahead and start off with those six Allen head bolts on the steering wheel first, and then we'll show you how you do the column adapter um, which in some cars is actually one step with the steering wheel where you have to pop the cover off the steering wheel and then go ahead and pull the wheel as one piece rather than doing it in two separate pieces like with the numbered Shelby cars. Okay, once you get the steering wheel off you can see that you need to pull out that 21 millimeter nut that's way down in there if you can see that. After that the two holes to the top and bottom of that 21 millimeter nut will be used for the steering wheel pullers so that you can pull this adapter off the actual column. Once that's done, preferably in the car, I just think it's a little bit easier. Of course you could do that if you wanted while it's out of the car. We'll go ahead and pull the uh, trim piece off the bottom and we'll be able to get the whole column out. The steering wheel puller that I used was uh, perhaps a little unorthodox. If you look very closely at the video here you can see that uh, I'm using an old steering wheel puller but I've modified the bolt that actually does the pulling in the center there because I frankly was using the steering wheel puller for something it wasn't intended for back when it was an emergency situation it had to be done and I kind of stripped out that middle bolt so what I've done is I've taken to using another puller's smaller diameter uh, bolt in the middle and with that and maybe a little screwdriver to hold the nut in place it's pretty easy to pull the little column adapters or a steering, steering wheel or what have you. There's not a whole lot of force involved in pulling a steering wheel, so that's not an issue. If you go to the parts store, it'll be a lot easier for you. You just go ahead and uh, thread the bolt down there because the body of that puller is actually threaded itself. So that's kind of nice. I'm using a nut on the back side and holding that still with a screwdriver just briefly to get started, then finishing off by driving the bolt down with a wrench. Now, of course, looking at this, you can pretty plainly see that if you have a little bit of capability, maybe a drill press and some scrap metal lying around, that since this isn't a very involved situation with this uh, pulling of the column and the wheel, that you could go ahead and make your own steering wheel puller quite easily. So if you're really cheap and you got a little extra time, maybe some scrap parts lying around but not a lot of cash, Go ahead and give this a go. Worst case scenario, I've known a few guys in my life who just uh, pull like crazy to get that steering wheel off of there. And to be honest with you, just recently at SDAC, I actually got the steering wheel off of a column by using a hammer and a punch while another guy held the wheel. So many varieties of uh, technique here, but at the same time, for 10 bucks you can get the tool. So I would highly recommend doing so. Okay, once you get the steering wheel or steering wheel and hub adapter like I had off there, you can see this nice lock plate right here. You're going to need a special tool to remove that. You don't absolutely have to have it, but I'm not going to lie, it uh, makes life so much easier I can't imagine not spending the $10. Technically speaking, at this point in the game, you, you could very much theoretically uh, do everything that we're going to do with the column still in the car, but that's just ridiculous. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bottom trim panel that's below the dash there. That'll expose the five nuts that hold the column in. 
we'll go ahead and then pull the connectors out of the block down there and then we'll have the um, column out of the car. It's going to be great. Okay, a couple things as we go ahead and get started with the pulling of the trim and uh, lower kind of cover to the dash here. You'll notice there is already a tilt column in the car and that's for the simple reason that uh, I wanted to install one before I go to the Shelby Dodge Automobile Club Annual Convention this year. And while I did get one installed, I learned a lot of lessons along the way. Like I mentioned at the front of the video, even amongst the front wheel drive Chryslers, the bracketry that holds the individual Saginaw columns to the dash is a little bit different between some of the models, uh, specifically the Daytona and the Shadow, they're quite a bit different. Moreover, uh, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we would be, uh, you know, giving you the opportunity to install some crews. And uh, if you've got a tilt column without crews, it's really not that big of a deal to add it. You'll see later on a step where I go ahead and uh, pull the turn signal stalk, the wiper slash turn signal slash cruise arm out of the column. And uh, you can go ahead and pull the non cruise arm out and install a cruise arm. I've actually done that in my Daytona already. I know the 89 Turbo 2 Daytonas and apparently the 89 Shelby CSX both came with the cruise control wiring already there under the dash. It's a kind of a little four prong guy under there. So that's already there to work for you. You might have to do something because I know for example the uh, 87 and 88 columns that I've got here. It was clearly a different different connector under the dash than it was for the later stuff So, you know, there will be little connector differences, but you know what uh, the wire colors are generally the same So go ahead and match them up. There's only four wires there and you'll be good to go All right, these are both uh, two-door Peabody Dodge Shadow Plymouth Sundance columns They look almost identical uh, one of the ways you can spot the columns that are for the uh, Shadow and Sundance versus, let's say, the Daytona and a few other things is that the mounting bracket right here, uh, where it goes right under the dash, is uh, actually much higher on these and allows for the uh, headlight switch, yeah, um, excuse me, your ignition switch here to be um, mounted in a vertical position. The Daytonas uh, face off to the side because they don't have quite the room for the connectors to sit up there. Um, even in addition to this difference, though, there's differences even between the Peabody columns. So if you look at this one, you can see, I believe this is an 87 or an 88 column, and you can see just how far all of these connectors reach down to the bottom. Uh, look at this other uh, column, however, and you will find that virtually none of the connectors reach all the way down there. Um, they don't reach as far. So. Uh, that's no good. Uh, again, I believe that's an 87 column right there on the right. And uh, so what we're going to have to do today is take basically the ignition switch, the light, the um, turn signal stalk, etc. All of those that end up being shorter on the 87 column, we're going to have to remove and then install uh, the longer stuff off of the 88 and 89 column onto that. So. Uh, we'll get that going and uh, very shortly here you're going to see some some removal uh, of components and things. But this will be the same across all the Saginaw columns for the most part. You might have some little differences here and there based on the year, but again these are all going to be pretty much the same. Okay, we've already seen the lock plate in here and uh, that's got to be removed. So you're going to go ahead and take your little steering wheel lock plate remover, stick it on there, and then uh, just go ahead and tighten down this bolt here on the bottom. What that's going to do is it's going to press down the lock plate so that you can get at the retaining ring. Don't press it uh, too far down there. It is relatively easy to bend it. I've done that in the past and then, uh, then that can cause some interference issues and things. So be careful with that. I'm going to go ahead and pull this uh, ring off next. It's just a retaining ring. They can be a real pain. Honestly, I think it's probably half the problem in the whole deal to remove that retaining ring. Once you get that done, you can go ahead and uh, slowly release the steering wheel lock freight plate depressor guy and uh, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, once you get the lock ring freed up, 
You can remove the steering wheel puller, work it the rest of the way out the shaft. You got your lock ring. The lock plate will come next. Note that it is keyed. And then there is the greasy little guy that holds the, uh, well, it doesn't really hold anything. This is for the horn button because uh, it's got the connection that goes into the horn, but whatever. Set that off to the side. There's a spring in here. Pull that out, set that off to the side. Next, you'll notice down in here that uh, there are a few screws. I'm going to go ahead and get a better shot on this for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, there's really four screws of concern in here for this uh, next step of the equation, if you will. We've got this screw right here, this nice black one that's on top. This will attach to the arm that goes and reaches in there for the uh, cruise uh, turn signal arm. When we make a right hand turn here, it exposes one, two, three screws that are deeper down in there. Those three screws are what retain this um, turn signal assembly here. Now, I do want to make sure that you know, and, and really to be perfectly clear, I, when I say turn signal assembly, I mean just this section here that actually engages the switch for the turn signal, which then runs the wires down to the column. The actual arm will come out with a pin that's down in there. So uh, those will come out in kind of, kind of the same but kind of separate steps too. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out uh, all four of these screws and um, that'll make life a little bit easier on us. So let's go ahead and start with that. Okay, now this piece will come free in here and come out. The one thing is you've got to remember that you've got your connectors down here so it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge there we go to free it up so there's that part actually a really nice looking column here next thing that's going to have to come out is this piece right here that is actually your key in indicator if the key is still in the ignition then that baby will go ahead and make some noise for you so let's go ahead and take that out next. Let's see if we can get it with this pair of tweezers. Not the ideal tool, but it's what I've got right here. There you go. Uh, this white piece comes out. And uh, there's this little black piece that generally pops out with it. Um, you don't actually have to remove that, so I'm going to leave that in there. Um, most times those will fly right out, but if that one wants to stay in there, that's fine. No big deal. This next part will require the key so that we can... Uh, remove the cylinder so we'll try and do that next okay this one didn't actually require the key if you look in the hole right here where that uh, key in chime came on that's where you'll normally see this green uh, piece right here you push that up on the screwdriver and then you go ahead and push in this tab right here which is available through this little deal right here a little access slot for it probably can't see that with my hand in the way right there this little access slot you go ahead and push that in and uh, pull on the cylinder and sometimes you'll have to give it a little pry here on the back side but nonetheless cylinder is out so that's kind of nice once you're to this point you can see that you're going to have a few uh, I believe those are T25 Torx uh, screws there pull those out and it's going to free up our column assembly I guess I should go ahead and remove the, uh, the little tilt arm because we'll need to remove that for uh, for some good measure here so while I struggle with the world's toughest tilt arm I'll also get a Torx driver and be back. Alright it's actually a T30 Torx driver but nonetheless you'll see that uh, you get in here it actually comes out nice and easy. Three of these bad lads here to deal with. No big deal though we'll just go ahead and take each one out of the column. We'll set those to the side and uh, at this point our column is going to be splitting apart pretty easily. It's going to be coming off uh, the two trim pieces on the top half that actually tilts. We'll be uh, able to separate. They're just held in there by these three screws. It's the one piece slips over the other and then they're both pressed down by the three Torx bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them here. Nice and simple here. No big deal at all. There we go. 
and uh, as you can see this is freed up and ready to go. Uh, this pin right here gets pushed down and out that will free up the, wi uh, the wiper arm slash turn signal there and um, from there we're going to be just about good to go to pull the rest of this stuff out of here. So let's go ahead and uh, get a couple things out of the way and uh, do this now. Alright, you can see that it's just kind of flopping down here now that uh, we've gone ahead and taken out uh, those three screws, got the uh, arm for the oh, arm for the uh, wipers and also the turn signal off. Next we're going to go ahead and start pulling these cables through here. Um, I like to start with the smaller ones first whenever possible. It seems like depending on the year, boy, you do not have a lot of room to maneuver these larger connectors. So, um, you know, go ahead and try and weasel these things out the best you can. Sometimes when you think they're really stuck, all it takes is um, a little investigation in there with a the screwdriver. And uh, you'll see they come right out. I got lucky there. That's not because I'm good. Um, and then uh, just keep working them. Keep working them. This is like Bob Ross doing some painting right here. On occasion you get a little happy accident going, which is pretty great. But uh, I'm going to take a little break from uh, camera time here so I can get a little bit better uh, shot at some of this stuff because you won't be able to see while I'm working here. So we'll come back in a bit. Okay, it's going to be hard to see in there, but I do want to point out a lot of times these columns get really loose. Uh, if you look very closely, you can see right here where the screwdriver is pointing at, there's kind of an inverted Torx bolt. There are three of those in there. When you get to this point in the column where it's this, uh, when it's to this shape here, you can actually get to two of those three bolts quite easily. I know a lot of guys that will only sure up those two bolts with some blue Loctite because Honestly, that's really all you need, and to get any further, you've really got to strip the column down farther than this, and it's not a lot of fun to do. And you're already at a point to where, honest to goodness, if this is your first time pulling one of these apart, you're going to have a heck of a time getting it back just to the state you found it in from here. So if you can eliminate any further work for yourself, you might want to consider doing so. Okay, so I have now strip the gray column. Uh, if you're wondering why I was going to do all this in the first place, by the way, I just, uh, it's a real pain to try and paint these columns and have them come out looking like factory and also without overspray and you gotta pull them apart anyway, so I thought just might as well do this. And plus it'll honestly look a little bit more period too with the, you know, proper color, slightly worn, you know, it won't look as out of place. Now that we've got the column exposed, we're going to go ahead and basically reverse everything that we've done. Now, of course, you're going to want to make sure that you put everything back through this piece before you go ahead and try and stuff everything through. If you just stuff everything through the column right here before you put it back through the plastic piece that uh, it's going to write in, obviously that's going to cause you some problems. So let's go ahead and uh, do that first. I'm going to go ahead and just reverse that, everything I've done again. There's the pin that holds the uh, wiper arm turn signal indicator here uh, into the thing. That pin's just going to go right back up in there where it was. Um, and then from there, and everything feeds over and down through this slot right here, if you were wondering. So um, once you get that done, feed everything back through. Of course, it'll end up going on the column like this. But nonetheless, once you're done with that, feed everything back through in the reverse order that you took it out. And life should be pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to lie though, it's, it's frustrating to get everything crammed in down there just right. So uh, take your time, have some patience, plan on it taking forever, and if it doesn't, well then bonus for you. Okay, we've got the column pretty much back together here. Um, and I guess, you know, from where we were, this is pretty much back together, but nonetheless. Let's go ahead and look at uh, kind of the final hard part here. I've got all the wires fed through. Again, I just did that in the reverse order what we took them out, but here's one of the challenging parts. Um, this back cover here rides about there, and this piece right here is what pushes down on the high beam selector. You've got to stick this in there and get it to ride in the little slot in the uh, case. I usually put them on as one unit, and then um, 
while this is down in position and over the uh, high beam selector lever there, you've got to go ahead and put the top piece over the bottom piece. Um, the wiper um, business will want to, like it is already doing now, it'll want to get uh, caught up on the outside and stuff, so it really makes for some wrestling. But uh, once you just, again, have some patience, uh, paint some happy trees in your mind, next thing you know, you'll have this thing sandwiched back together. And once you get it back together uh, and confirm that the headlight switch uh, is good to go, and by that I mean, of course, the uh, high beam selector switch for the headlights, uh, you can go ahead and, and nestle everything back down, put those Torx bolts back in, and, and it works pretty well. But uh, don't don't ease up, you know, once you get the two halves sandwiched together, because with all these cables and everything jammed in there, it's a situation where you could pretty easily have uh, the cases separate, and then that selector lever guy that's sandwiched in the middle of the actual turn signal stalk and the uh, selector lever, uh, it, can, it can force it back apart, and then that falls down, and it's a real bummer. So be careful there, and you should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically do all that. I should note that this uh, this piece right here, which is kind of like a little uh, uh, little key lockout guy, um, this does actually fit through a larger hole in this, so that helps to get everything lined up. And uh, other than that, it's just going to be the reverse of um, of the removal. So I'll probably check you guys once I get this thing back in the car, and we'll see how it looks. All right, well, there it is. We've got our newly installed tilt column. Um, try and get this from a little bit farther out here. But, uh, yeah, not too bad. Works pretty well. Go ahead and give her a little tilt down. And uh, we got driving uh, kind of height there, and then we got uh, getting out of the car height. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult for me to swing my knee under it. I mean, that's... This is probably where the where the wheel would be on uh, a stock uh, column. It's pretty terrible. So, oh, gotta get out of the car. No, no problems now. Pretty easy, so either way, happy to have it. Uh, thanks to all the guys on TurboMopper.com who helped me out with the fact that uh, the column is indeed different and uh, set me up with some, some columns so I could make it work at SDAC. So thanks guys, and uh, we'll keep this project uh, rolling along.